These are my highlights of the 2024 edition of Fan Expo Canada. As always, I began by walking around the show floor and looking at the various exhibits that they have. Here's a Cineplex booth for uh, Borderlands, uh, a photo op opportunity for Transformers 1, a Toronto Raptors video game thing, the 25th anniversary of Neopets, uh, people playing with lightsabers, nerds, gummy clusters. I had a lot of samples during the weekend. Uh, I think this is for the 25th anniversary of Lego Star Wars. And uh, I think coming up is some uh, Super Mario Lego display. Uh, there's the uh, Lego Mario uh, holding a TV screen. Uh, this is uh, me uh, walking along the uh, self-building uh, show floor. Hagafa all along. So this is uh, kind of like a haunted house uh, display uh, showing some uh, costumes from the upcoming uh, Disney Plus show, uh, which includes one for a character who is just named uh, Teen, and uh, we'll have more of that later on. And... Uh, Here's uh, the end of the uh, exhibit for uh, Agatha all along. So uh, here's the uh, Paramount Lodge uh, coming back this year. Now with a talking goat. Hey, I'm starving out here. Could you ask the turtles for a slice of pizza? So here's some uh, Star Trek triples, a few uh, props from uh, Star Trek series. Here's a Star Trek Yeti. Uh, here are the Ninja Turtles displays. Uh, I did not get pizza for the goat. I think there's like a new animated series that is uh, starting soon based on uh, the next mutation film. And the uh, first Q&A was with the Trailer Park Boys. Jack, right Jack. on. Jack, Jack, Jack. Bob's you good? Around yeah, you fucked up. <laughs> Let's just come around this way. Came around the back. I fucked up. Hang on. <laughs> Well, I was following God you. Damn, okay. it's a God, I, I went the right way. I sat down. Oh, these are these are fancy chairs. Yeah, these are like director chairs. What's fancy about them? No, we're taking these home with us. <laughs> you can. I think that's fine. Oh, I know. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if you check them or just buy an extra seat, maybe. Which who? Uh, which person in here is the one they call banana shoes? <laughs> oh, it's you. I want, I want them just for you. I like, them. I like your boots as well. Nailed them. <laughs> Old banana shoes. Bumps is feeling pretty good. <laughs> well, it's those things you gave me. I thought me. this was a dry event. <laughs> those things you gave me to eat, those little mushroom things. Did you get those drinks here? Or did you bring them from the hotel? Well, that's just uh, water. Julian? Uh... Uh, nope, I've, no comment. I've got my ways. They too began with a panel with horror director Mike Flanagan and his wife, actress Kate Siegel. With the cast or the, the, uh, the characters of uh, The Hunting of Hill House, what metal would uh, each character meddle in in the Olympics? Uh, Amor Crane would meddle <coughs> in competitive drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it can be competitive, though. Um, Shirley would be. It's probably like a true older sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Um, I don't think Steve competes. No, I actually think Steve yeah. would do like long jump. Long jump? <laughs> Just something like, alright, Steve. I feel like Steve's reporting on the events. <laughs> Next we have the uh, Star Wars displays. I wonder what the Stormtroopers waving at. Here are the stand sort of various fan organizations, including some uh, Doctor Who Daleks. A highlight of day two was doing the resin ring workshop for the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Here's a look at the process.
My final panel for the second day of Fan Expo Canada was with showrunner Jack Schaefer and actors Joe Locke and Catherine Hahn for the upcoming Disney Plus Marvel TV series, Agatha All Along. We start with Jack first. Is Agatha a villain? Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> She isn't in the sense of the MCU, right? The MCU loves their labels, and so in that sphere, she is she is coded as a, as a villain. But we all know she's way, way more than that. Um, and her motivations are very different than um, your average villain in the MCU. Um, yeah, and she's far more spectacular. <laughs> Joe, what do you say? Do you think Agatha's a villain? Yeah, I think the best people are. You know, <laughs> villains have so many layers to them. You know, not just they got more motivations than yours, I guess. We're learning a lot about you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine, what do you think? Is Agatha a villain? I mean, you can't put Agatha in a box. <laughs> I think there's, uh, of course. Um, but one always asks the question, is she a good witch or a bad witch? Mm. Which witch is which? There's a lot of witch happening in Agatha Harkness. Day three began with a panel with Ahsoka actor Rosario Dawson. Now, did you expect the response to be so overwhelmingly positive for your work with Hayden in the World Between Worlds scene in episode 5? you know, really blown away that we were going to have a world between worlds. It's actually one of the only things that we filmed that we couldn't actually see because we didn't shoot that on the volume. Um, so it was just sort of like to watch it myself afterwards and see how they, you know, brought it up from the animation was just one of the coolest things. And that swipe that he does and then it goes and turns into the Clone Wars, like, I just thought that was so brilliant on Dave's part because we got to see Anakin and his different garb at that time. And Ahsoka as well, and it's like for the fans of the animation, it was so cool to see that brought out, and also startling to really recognize just how young she was. Um, but for people who didn't know, it was a wonderful introduction to her history and her, you know, just it said so much in such a small moment about like just everything that has brought her to this moment, where in which she is a little bit more stoic and reserved and pulled back and honestly traumatized. Saturday is notoriously the busiest day at Fan Expo with crowds of people moving along the floor of the North Building. The crowds were actually worse in the South Building, especially in the hallways where hundreds of people waited to board the escalators to change buildings. Even this Dementor cosplayer couldn't help me escape the terrors of this day. As such, I escaped back to the North Building for a panel with Twister actor Helen Hunt. Have you been to Toronto before? I have. I've been to your film festival a few times. <laughs> it worked a little, but how about that? I don't remember which oh, signs you've been working too long. <laughs> um, no, but I have been here and I have friends from here. Love that. Yeah. Do you have any uh, like favorite food places that you like to visit here? I remember some incredible Chinese food. I'm not sure before, right? Do we, do we have, do we coast on this? Yes? Do we need some recommendations? Just, just hit me up, I wanna know what to eat tonight. That's gonna be a good one. Um, okay, so we have so many fans here in the room, and I wanna talk about so many different things with you, but I think it's important for us to understand your origin story. Um, for, like, being in entertainment is kind of in your blood. Yeah, my dad was a director, a theater director, and um, so I used to go to rehearsal with him, I never thought about being an actor, but I thought I just like when people get together and tell a story in a room. And um, then I went to an acting class just because my aunt, who's my age, which is a whole other story, <laughs> um, was, in the, yeah, was in the class. And I don't know what happened. An agent came and I turned around and I was in Canada for my first job in Calgary. How about that? The final day of Fan Expo began with a panel with actor-turned-filmmaker Bryce Dallas Howard. My, my dad is a director, and one of the things that he says... Thank you. <laughs> um, he's the best. Uh, and he says that one of the things that he misses most about acting is getting the opportunity to watch other directors work. Um, and, and what's kind of unfortunate about being a director 
is that, you know, crew members, writers, actors, DPs, you know, everyone through pre-production, you know, production, post-production, marketing, etc. Like, they all get so much more experience often than the director because the director is just on one project for about two years and it's their own project. And so, um, so yes, because directors work very, very, very differently. And I constantly am stealing things and, and you know, applying it. And um, just a, a handful of things, there's something called a silent take that I do that I really love. And it's, um, I learned it from Gus Van Sand. And, uh, and it's basically like, you do the scene with all the dialogue and then the second to last take, uh, you have the actors go through the scene, uh, all the moments, but without saying the dialogue. And it, it really helps you out in the editing room in a, in a giant way. On, on Mando, you don't really have to do that that much because it's, it's always a silent take, essentially. Um, but, uh, but that's always been wonderful. And then you always have the actors do one more take you know, just for them. And, and then usually, you know, that one is pretty dazzling. My second panel of the day was with Patrick Alberton, Bill Morris, Larry Thomas, and John O'Hurley, who are all known for playing memorable characters on the sitcom Seinfeld. Larry David Thomas had called, we all know the casting director there, uh, had called and said we have this role for John tomorrow if he wants it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's just a guest star, and, uh, and I, I said to my manager, I said, tell them no. I said, I'm still looking my wounds up, up the whole well, my manager had never called them at 10.30 the following morning, said they had the table read in a waiting room. So get your butt over there and do it. Now, had I not done it, I would have disappeared into a cultural vacuum somewhere. <laughs> but, but I will say that the, the first read through, I called my manager and I said, this is the number one show on television. <laughs> It's not even funny. <laughs> and the point was, it wasn't funny. Seinfeld didn't read funny. It played funny. And it played funny because the actors, all and, and, and the four of us included, every scene had to be played like it was high drama or it wasn't funny. So it was the opposite of, it was the ironic opposite of comedy, it was to the more serious you screamed, no soup for you, or, or the more deadpan he was, the funnier it was. If we tried to make it a joke fest, as the show would have fallen flat on his face, George Costanza had to be eternally mediocre. <laughs> Screwing his way to the middle of life. After walking around and catching some of the areas that I missed, I would proceed to my final panel of the convention, and that would be with actress Marissa Tomei. Well, when I was little, we only did like just plays like probably everyone does in school. I mean, if they're lucky, yeah. that's did awesome. You do it? Did you do it? I did. I was yeah. shocked. I was shocked as a child. Yeah. Well, being shy doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't want to be an actor. I was super shy. I couldn't, like, you know, barely speak. <laughs> like, I was really, like, you know, the person behind my mom's little okay. you know, apron strings kind of thing. That's adorable, yeah. though, because you have such big personality in some of the characters you bring out. I love that that is the truth. That's like the opposite. Yes, yeah, like, yeah. that's true yeah. acting talent, y'all, so you can be shy, <laughs> but still be. <laughs> and that concludes my highlights of the 2024 edition of Fan Expo Canada. I will see you next year.